All right, so good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here. I do, um, I do appreciate you being here tonight. I'm gonna do something tonight. This was a request that I talk about trade management and kind of trade trade management from entry to exit in a trade. I thought, yeah, that's a pretty good subject and really good for um, a member's class for sure because it gets a little bit deep in the weeds. Now, you guys know that I am very strict at following a set of rules, a set of guidelines. So what I'm going to show you tonight is kind of what I do. And yeah, I guess it's up to you to decide whether this is the right method for you. Now, kind of to kick things off, where does trade management begin? When do you begin your trade management? In the plan, yep. You begin your trade management before you actually open the trade, before the trade starts. And that's what Ed is referring to. You begin your trade management by the plan that you have. Before that order is even considered about, considered, you have a trade plan in place. You know what your, what your goal is, what your trade is, what your risk tolerance is to a trade. Okay, now let's just use something, you know, popped up today um, as a possible trade. Let's take a look at Crocs. So the first thing I'm going to do when I look at this thing is I'm going to say, does this meet my criteria? Number one, do I have a trend? The answer is yes. Number two, is the trend going with the direction of the market? Yes. Number three, am I trying to buy this stock at or near price support? If the answer is yes, how much risk is there in the trade? I have an exact number for me. If I'm going to place a trade, and I like this trade setup, and I like this trade pattern. As you can see, I placed an alert on it. I alerted everyone to this today when this popped up. Okay, now I didn't take this trade. And it's a judgment call on my part because I don't like the condition of the market right now. I think the market is overextended, so I didn't take the trade. That's a choice I make. So once again, trade management begins before the trade ever occurs. I didn't like I don't like the condition of the market. I think the market is overextended. I think the market needs more rest or pullback. I think today's complete reversal overnight was not a healthy move for the market. So I chose not to trade many trades today. That's a choice. Doesn't matter how beautiful the trade setup is. Doesn't matter if I've identified it. My trade management begins before I enter the trade. Okay. <clears throat> now, if I decide that I'm going to move into this trade, the first thing I'm going to do is identify where my stop loss is. Because it really depends on where I catch this trade. Would you guys agree that if we catch this trade here at the end of the day, how many of you look at this chart right now and say, this is a good trade? Okay, I want you to answer that. You don't have to answer it in the room. Answer it to yourself. Is this a good trade? Well, I have a rule. If I see a stock has moved more than 6% in that day before I get a chance to see it, it's not a trade. It's already moved too far. The risk to my stop, too big a percentage, I'm not going to take the trade. Okay, so I look at this as a chase at this point. I'm not going to chase that move. Okay, because I know that if I calculate from here to a stop loss underneath this price support, it's going to be a higher percentage than I want to take or even a potentially a higher dollar than I want to take in a trade. So the first step that you guys have to do when you start planning your risk of your trade 
is understand what you're willing to accept in risk. Percentage is different, Keith. Yeah, percentage is different. Because remember, stock trades, I don't have, I, I don't have the leverage. Okay, so it does differ a little bit if I'm trading a stock trade. Okay, but the same rule would apply here. 6% up on the day, stop loss is too far away. I'm not taking that trade. And that's a discipline thing, guys, that I have developed. It was hard for me to do, just like anyone else that tries to develop a discipline. It's not easy. Okay. But when I see this at the end of the day and say, man, should I jump on this right now? The answer is always no. It's not even a question mark. It's not even a, an afterthought. It's no. It's not a trade. And you guys will hear me repeat this over and over and over. Nope, I'm not going to chase that trade. In fact, what I'll say is what I need is I need this to either rest or pull back to get me an entry into the position. You may hear Rick say it differently. Rick will do something like this. He'll take a box and he'll draw a box out here and he says, you know, I want to get into this trade, but somewhere in here. He's saying the same thing in a different way. I don't want to chase that trade. Okay, so the first step everyone has to ask, answer for themselves, and you have to know this, guys. Before you can effectively manage a trade, you have to know what your tolerance to risk is. How much are you willing to lose on a trade? And I say willing to lose on a trade, and I mean willing to lose on a trade, because can we guarantee that this trade's going to move higher? No matter how beautiful the pattern is, no matter if Rick and I and Warren Buffett and 40,000 other professional traders look at this and say, this is a great trade, we cannot guarantee that that trade is going to go up and be a winner. Well, Richard, that's one of the reasons why I place price alerts. Notice how I place that price alert. I placed that price alert based on these three candles, and I wanted to see those breached with buyers pushing through. So this alerted first thing this morning. If I had that decision made that the market was a good market to trade today, you guys think there'd be any question in your mind whether I would take that position? Because I was prepared ready for the potential trade. So it's a judgment call then at that point, when the market's gapping 300 points, do I chase this market up? Okay. So when I'm ready, that's why I do the market evaluation every morning, because it sets my path for the day, how I'm facing the market for the day. Does that make sense, guys? I want to know what the market condition is. I want to evaluate that market condition. 300-point gap is not a healthy market, especially when that 300-point gap reverses a 400-point loss the day before. Okay. Make sense? So if I want to enter a trade, I'm going to place that trade as near to that entry as I can be for that position, and I'm going to wait for that position to come. I can plan this trade ahead of time. I can determine whether this risk is acceptable. Okay. Now if I'm in a stock trade, if I'm choosing to do a stock trade on this, I have to plan this trade just a little bit differently than I would an option trade because if I'm looking at a daily chart and looking to do a stock trade, I'm probably looking at uh, the potential of holding this for a few days. Okay, Not that it always turns out that way, but I always look for that potential to hold it several days. You know, like catching this one right here and holding this trade through that move. 
okay? But if it's an option trade, I look at it a little bit differently. In an option trade, I'm looking for, usually on swing trades, that really quick hit, that quick move to the upside. When I'm planning a swing trade, okay? <clears throat> You know, Rick, um, that's an interesting thing. I, I run into that with a lot of folks. Um, and, okay, you, you have a $100 tolerance for, for risk on this. So let me ask you this, Rick. Can you take this trade, put a, put a stop loss in here? If we put a stop loss here and we put your entry here, do you have to think about that trade more in about half a second? If your risk is $100 on that trade and you're trading stock, can you take that trade? The answer is no. You're entering at 62 and exit to a stop loss of 57. That's way more than $100. Um, simple math, Emily. Simple math. If, if Rick wants to risk $100 on a trade, Looking at this trade, how is he going to trade this? Well, he could maybe trade 10 shares or something like that and make this trade work. He could do it with a smaller trade. If he's trading this with an option, does he have any choices here? No, there's no choice. There's no trade here, period. Explanation point, can't make that trade because he can't break it down into a few shares, right? So if he's trading options, he looks at this trade and goes, nope, can't take it. Move on. And that's exactly what I do. If I look at a trade and it doesn't fit my tolerance for risk, I move on. And let's, let's go to, let's use this for a second. If we follow a set of rules, and you guys know I follow a set of rules, if I'm going to be buying this, at a minimum, I'm probably going to be buying a 70 delta option. If I buy a 70 delta option up here, okay? Oh, it's a stupid thing. Give me that tool. If I buy a 70 delta option and we're at 62 and a half, how far does this have to fall before I lose my hundred dollars? $2 down, I've already lost a minimum of $140 and maybe more. Depending on what the gamma is and what the theta decay rate is, right? The implied volatility change. So in $2 down, I can look at this and say, well, that's 60. That isn't even anywhere close to 57. And I'm already pressing my loss on this trade can't take the trade. You guys see where I'm going here? This is pretty simple stuff. And people will ask me, well, how do you know you're going to take a 70 delta option? Because I know I won't take anything less than a 70 delta option. I'm going to be right there. I may go a little bit higher in delta. How is it harder, June? If you're following a set of rules, I just I just explained that. How is that harder? Let me change the color here, this silly thing. <clears throat> Implied volatility does change, that's right. But the same math is true on the delta, right? If we have a high implied volatility 
and use Rick's example, we have a risk tolerance of $100 on this trade. And I know I'm going to be taking at least a 70 delta option. Does it matter if the implied volatility is high or not? Nope, I still can't take this trade. Right? Can't take it. Simple answer. It's black and white. Can't take the trade. Okay, now let's assume that our risk tolerance is high enough and we can take this trade. Okay? We can take this trade. What do I do? <clears throat> just drop in, just drop in why, short summary. Um, I don't know what you're asking there. like to know. So let's assume we can take the, the risk tolerance on this trade is okay. And we put this trade on. When I put this trade on and I set my stop loss here, let me ask Ed this question because I think I know the answer. In fact, I'm pretty sure I know the answer. In fact, I know I know the answer. <laughs> and if you pick, figure out that this is an acceptable trade and you set your stop loss here and you put that trade in play, do you sit and watch this thing wiggle around through the day? Never. And why is that, Ed? Because after you've planned the trade, you're kind of done with it, right? In the sense that the plan is there, the orders are in place, and now we just wait. We wait to see if we're right. Exactly. Have a stop rule. You know the risk in the trade. Now I don't have to worry about it anymore. Can you guys see that's very different than what most people do in the market? They put on a trade like this, and then they sit and stare, chewing on their fingernails or whatever they're using to fight that nervous energy. They're watching this move around. They're watching the digits on, the, on their platform flash back around, and it drives them about half nuts. I don't do that. Ed doesn't do that. When I put the trade on, the trade is on. Okay, and unless something fundamentally changes with the stock or the market itself, that plan doesn't change. Okay, so does it matter to me if the stock does this the next day? I don't like it, but nope, it doesn't change anything about the plan. Does it matter to me if the next day it does this? Nope. I don't like it, but it doesn't change the plan. I know what my tolerance is to risk, and I'm not staring at this. Does it fit my plan? Yes. Stay with the trade. As a matter of fact, that's what I do every morning before the market opens. After I get done with the morning prep and the blog and all that kind of stuff, I go through every trade that I'm in. Okay? And by the way, I keep it really simple. I just have a notebook. Okay? It sits here on my desk. I write down my trades in it. Okay? On that book, in that notebook, I just go through the list and I evaluate every trade. Is my stop loss right? Am I, is it still holding to my plan? Okay. What you got there, Kevin? Got your frozen mug? Three demerits for Kevin for being late. <laughs> okay. 
Jake, let's not get into the minutia here. We're just making the assumption that we've planned this trade and this play trade is acceptable. And now we've set up the trade. What I'm trying to demonstrate here is that when I put on a trade, I'm done thinking about this position to the extent that I'm going to let this trade plan work. Okay. I'm not going to second guess it unless something fundamental changes with the stock or with the market itself. I'm done looking at this trade until it does something. Every morning I reevaluate. Do I need to change my plan? Is something changed? Nope. Stick with the plan. Move on. What if, and you guys see me do this all the time, what if in the morning I look at this trade and the stock is gapping up here? The day after I bought it, the stock is gapping up. What do I do? Yep. I don't even I don't even ask a second question, do I? I don't care what happens after that. In fact, I usually don't even wait to see if I can squeeze a few more pennies out of this. I just enter an order to close the trade as soon as the market opens. I'm done. Market just gave me a gift. I take it. Okay, that's a rule for me. No second guessing, no questioning. I don't sit here and stare at this. How many of you guys have ever sat and stared? A stock gaps up, you're going, oh my gosh, yes, I finally got one. And you spend the rest of the day watching that as it kind of dribbles all the way back down. And you, because you want, yeah, I want this much money. I don't want this much money. It's going to come back. Is that efficient in your day? Or does that just make you about nuts? So the first thing I do is enter an order to close it. Now, if it's one of those really fast mover, mover stocks, we're talking about one of those stocks that's just running, okay? Then what I do is I place an order with a trailing stop loss. I'll give it 20, 25 cents or something on an option. Whatever, whatever seems reasonable. I'll set a, a trailing stop loss and from that point on, I'm done. The computer's gonna take me out of that trade when it pulls back, it's over. I'm not thinking about it a second longer. And you know, is, wasn't that hard for you to learn, Ed? It was really hard for me. I mean, it was just like, it was really hard for me to have a set of rules and then I was breaking them all the time. And finally I came to that realization that what's the point of having rules unless you follow them? And I just became very, very stringent on following those rules. Okay. There's no second guessing. It's black and white for me. It's either a trade or it's not. Period. It either is the right setup for the market day or it's not. Period. Right? So let's say we get into this trade and this trade actually starts to work for us. Starts to move on up like we'd hoped. Stock's moving up. What do I do, guys, if that's moving up? Well, the next thing I'm thinking about in a trade is where's my profit goal? Where's my target? Now, Rick says, Rick gets all cross and everything when he talks about targets, but he does talk about profit goals, right? Reaching a goal. Does a goal not set a target? He may use it as a target range, but he has a goal in mind, right? He knows what he wants to achieve in that trade. Now, the difference between what Rick will do and I will do, he may set that with that trade a little bit 
trying to squeeze a little bit more out of it. I don't. If it moves up and is moving up into my profit, my goal, I'm out of the trade. I don't care what happens with at that point. I don't care if I exit this trade here and the rest of the day that stock goes like this because this money was not mine to begin with. The only money I can capture is when I take that profit. I don't care what happens after that point because what I did here is I had a successful trade, did I not? I entered a trade correctly, I exited the trade correctly, and I took my profits on the trade. Dang, gun this thing. And I took my profits on the trade. That is what I'm here to do. Okay. That is what I'm here to do. So if the trade is moving up and steadily moving up, if, if I've got a nice move going on in here, what do I do? Well, the next morning, and I, I mean the next morning. The next morning when I'm evaluating my trades, I make a decision. Do I need to move this stop loss? That's going to be a different question for everyone. How do you want to manage this trade? Most often when I get into a trade and it's moving in my direction, I'm going to try to move this up a little bit. I want to get closer and closer to break even on the trade if I can, but I'm not going to press that trade too hard because I know this happens all the time. We break out like this and then what do we do? We pull back often to test support. So I'm not going to press that trade too hard. I'm going to give it some room. Because if my risk tolerance was here before, why, why does that change here? It doesn't. It doesn't change. I want to get this to break even as soon as I can. But it would be more likely after I do that that I would move the stop loss up. Does that make sense, guys? If the tolerance to risk is the tolerance to risk, what difference does it make if we move up one day and pull back one or two days? As long as it doesn't break the stop, nothing changes in the trade, right? Now, the only way you can do this that I know of is you can't be watching these trades and staring at them all day long. It's not efficient. It's not good for your health. The only thing you can do is set your stop, make your decision, and let the trade work. We can't, we can't micromanage this to success. How many of you in here has already proven you can't micromanage yourself into success? Anybody proven that yet? In fact, how many of you would say the more micromanaging you do, the worse it gets? Right? So micromanagement, it doesn't help us to stare at it. It doesn't help us. to try and micromanage this because we've already tried that and that doesn't work. So we set our stop loss, we make our decisions and we let the trade work. Okay, if I've got a trade that I've moved up that I know is break even, I worry about it even less. I really don't worry about it at that point. Now, people will say, well, what if it gaps against you? And that's true, particularly in this market, the way the market has been lately. It could gap against you and take that all away, right? But in this circumstance right here, if the market is moving steady and the trend has been moving steady, I'm just going to stay with the trend of the trade. Okay. 
because we've all done this, right? We get in on this trade, this stock shoots up, and the next morning it pulls back to here and we close the trade. We've all done that. When nothing had changed about the trade, our stop loss was still here. Nothing had changed, except we panicked, right? How many of you have ever looked at a candlestick like this and said, oh my gosh, I've got to close this trade. This is the, that is a terrible candlestick because we're staring at it all day long. Don't do that. Come in the next morning, set your stop loss. Let the trade work. Because we can't predict what's coming next. All we can do is follow the trend. Okay, so managing the exit on this trade is just as easy as managing the stop loss for me. That's a decision that I've made ahead of time. Okay, now there's several ways I might do this depending on the strategy that I'm in. Okay, so for example, on the diamonds today, <clears throat> I took this bear call credit spread when the market was up about 425, 430 points, I put on this bear call credit spread. Okay, at the end of today, that bear call credit spread at the end of today was up 33%. If I get a down move tomorrow and right now the Dow futures are down 160 points, guess what I'm going to be doing with that trade? If I get a gap down tomorrow, guess what happens? I close the trade. I take the profit. I'm done with that one. What's the next one? I'm not going to sit and watch that wiggle around. I made money, close the trade, look for the next trade. So if the market is gapping down in the morning, I know that there'll be an order placed in the market to close this trade when the market opens. I'll capture that gain, then I'll move on. I'm not going to sit and try to negotiate with the market because I can't influence what's going to happen next. We talked about this a little bit today. I'm going to go to something here that's just a little bit different. If Will you guys agree with me that if you look at the market, the first thing we learned in technical analysis, one of the first things we learned in technical analysis was the peak and valley pattern, right? One of the first things you learn is stocks move in this peak and valley pattern. We learned that trends make higher highs and higher lows. Okay. <clears throat> So what's the best way to take advantage of this trend? What's the best way to take and exploit the price action of this trade? We wait for the stock to make its rest or its pullback. We look for the entry signal. And if we're trading this in a stock or if we're just trading this in a directional option, What's the best way to capture profits in this trade? As it moves up, take your profits. We don't know when that turning point's gonna come, right? How many of you in option trades have ever done this? You have a nice profit in a trade, you're up 20, 25%. Waiting for the turn, I'm waiting for the turn, I'm trying to squeeze every cent out of this trade, and the next day the stock moves down, maybe gaps down a little bit for you, it doesn't even come close to coming back to where you entered, but because of the change of implied volatility, the profit's gone. Right? So how do we avoid that problem? We avoid that problem by taking profits into strength when the stock is moving up when the stock is reaching our goal in the trade, take the profit.
you guys will often see me do this. If I'm in a trade, let's say I've picked up a position in a trade and I look up here and I say there's a resistance level up here in that chart, you will often see me place an order to close this trade right about there before it hits resistance because I'm taking the profit as it moves up into strength. I'm not waiting for it to hit or pull back. I'm not trying to squeeze every penny out of it. My money was made between here and here. I'm done. Okay. So if we're going to be good at managing trades and being profitable in trades, we have to get comfortable. We have to get good with taking profits. Right? Because we've all sat and stared at these, didn't take the trades, and ended up closing the trade for a loss or a lot less than what we could have had. Right? Every single one of us has done that. So why keep repeating the same mistake? Right? Doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. Einstein called that insanity. Why do we keep doing it? Do we think somehow this time it'll be different? Probably not. Right? We can't control that. What we control is ourselves, our plan. We manage the, begin the management of the trade before we ever enter the position. We follow a set of rules. When we reach our profit goals, we take that profit off. If that trade fails, is there any question here where you're going to be out? Trade fails. I don't win every trade I make. How can I maintain a good winning ratio if I don't let losses get clipped off quick? Okay. A uh, trader, if you go into the members e-learning archive, on the web page I talk about this all the time too um, yes I use conditional orders it's a conditional order if the stock crosses down through my price threshold it's out I don't care if it's an option or whatever close this option if the stock breaks this support I'm out it's also a conditional order if the stock moves up here and I've got my profit goal in this close the trade and I'm out and every single morning, I'm evaluating those to make sure they're correct. Every single morning before the market opens, I evaluate my stops and my positions to make sure they're where I want them to be. Yes, it's a conditional order to take profits. Conditional order to exit at a loss, conditional order to take profits. Okay. Awesome, Barry. Awesome. So if we want to best exploit price action, then we need to follow a set of rules and a set of guidelines. Let me ask you this question. If the trend of the stock is here and the stock moves up like this and gets a couple days of pullback, is this a good buy signal here? Now be honest guys, are we following a trend? What, what rules are we following? It's likely not a good trade. Why is it likely not a good trade? I can tell you without ever seeing price, the risk to the stop loss on this is probably so far away, I would never take it. 
Because if we shot up like this, where's the last set test of support? How can I plan a trade if there's no bottom under it? But isn't it true, guys, when we see these stocks that have shot up, we hope and pray that we get a couple, three days of pullback. And boy, we see that candlestick pop in there and we got to jump. We can't wait. We don't even take the time to calculate. We don't do anything. Get me in this trade. And then what happens? The stock either drifts sideways. Or it goes ahead and pulls on back to the trend. Most of the time, not all the time, most of the time, because that's how stocks move. So I'm going to ask you guys a question again. When that occurs, is this a good trade? Probably not, right? The best way thing we can probably do is just move on and find another chart. Because we're asking for trouble when we take high-risk trades like that. And the charts are full of that pattern, by the way. I mean, everywhere you look, you'll see this pattern occur. We shoot up, pull back a little bit, get a little one-day pop. Everybody jumps on the trade, and then they jerk the carpet out from under them. Charts are full of that pattern. Look for it. You'll see it. Okay. So this goes to that whole idea. Do you, are you following a set of rules or are you not? I'm a trend trader. I have a couple of patterns that I try to exploit. I try to trade over and over and over again. This, I know, is not one of them. I have no desire to chase that. Okay. Can you guys see how I'm trying to eliminate losses before they occur? Okay. I want to see stocks reacting to price support and trend. Okay. Look at my alerts on here. Crocs. Price support and trend. Now I'm interested. Twitter. Price support. And I'm waiting for this to move over here to trend. The closer and closer it gets to trend, the better that trade becomes to me. That means I have to be patient. Right? Again, good trade management begins before you enter the trade. Great examples of this are right here. Boom. Suck everybody in. What do we do? And back to trend. Big sweeping move up. Pull back a couple of days. Get into that trade. This one actually worked. But so much of the time, we get that big sweeping move up, couple days pull back, boom, pop that candle in there. Guess what happens? We get stopped out on the trade. It repeats itself in these charts over and over and over again. The best trades are always going to be those that are responsible Expecting support and trend. So I wait for those trades. The question is, yes, I wait. See what I'm doing here? I'm waiting. I'm waiting.
okay? Now let's say you can't hold yourself, and, and it's okay, I do it too. You know, I'll see this candle intraday. The only thing that kept me from joining a trade like this today is I didn't like the reversal overnight, the big jump up, so I wasn't really interested in buying much today at all. So I just kept repeating over and over and over. If anyone in Rightway Options can agree with me, I just kept repeating over and over and over. Be careful, guys. Be careful, guys. Be careful, guys. Don't chase. I repeated it over and over and over today. Because I know if this slides over here to trend and gives me that buy signal, it'll probably be the better buy signal. Patient for the trade. And you can see it's in every one of my charts. What am I doing? I'm waiting for the trade. Every single one, it's wait for the trade to occur. Wait for the trade to occur. Wait for the trade to occur. Okay. Now the reason I can do that is because guys, there's so many different trades out there. We can be picky about the trades we take. One of the things I find that's kind of interesting to me is, is we spend a lot of time as traders. I, I, was, I was the worst at it. If, if my computer was on and the market was open, open, I had to be in a trade. Now let's think about that, guys. Just imagine if you had held yourself Followed a set of rules and avoided about half of your losing trades. What would your account be like today? Isn't that proof that activity does not equal results? Just pushing and pressing and forcing all the time, activity does not equal results. Okay, uh, Jake, I've been kind of going over that this whole class today. What's the condition of the market? Is the stock trending? Is it at or near price support and trend? Is it moving with the direction of the market? Do I believe that the market is in a good condition to be buying? Can I place an order on the trade and have a stop loss that's acceptable to my risk tolerance? All of those questions have to be answered yes. Okay, I follow a set of rules, a plan for my trades. Guys, I don't give this lip surface. This is what I do. You see it every day when I look at charts and mark up charts and put alerts on charts. You see it every day. This is what I do. Just because the market's open and it's trading doesn't mean I need to trade. I've learned that. It took me a long time to learn that. Took me a long time and a lot of pain to realize that activity does not equal results. Okay. So management of a simple directional trade is really pretty black and white for me. It either fits, it fits me as a trade, it's either fitting my rules or it's not. There's no gray area. Let me ask you guys, anyone in right way options will know this. 
if I have a risk tolerance on a trade, let's say my risk tolerance or uh, for any trade is $200, and that stock has a $205 risk to my stop loss, you guys think I negotiate with the market and go ahead and take that trade? I don't. Again, what's the point of having a rule unless you follow it? My risk tolerance is this. That's as much as I'm willing to risk. I'm not risking a penny more. Because I know there's another chart out there that I can probably put a trade on if I just give myself some time to look for it. There's probably a trade out there that I might even be a better setup that I only have to risk $150 on to begin with. I have to look. Yes, I do go short. Well, I am just told you guys about the directional, I mean, the, the Diamonds credit spread short that I bought today. Posted in the room, bought it today. I'm up 33% at the end of the day. That's a short trade. Okay. So if there's anything I can really get across to you tonight is getting yourself a set of rules. You see, I don't care. I don't, it doesn't, I don't care what your rules are. But you've got to be able to prove that those rules actually make money. I know my rules make money. They don't make money every day. They don't make money every second of the day. That's okay. I know over time my rules make money. So I just stick with my plan. <laughs> yeah, 10 or a thousand better charts out there if you have to take too much risk on a trade. And I, I say this before, and you know, and I really mean this. If if Rick jumps into a trade and Warren Buffett comes and knocks on my door and says, Doug, you're out of your freaking mind if you don't take this trade. If that trade doesn't fit my rules, I don't take the trade. I don't care what anybody else is doing. It's my money. Okay. No, my stops are, how can they be on close of a day if I'm setting a, an actual tolerance to risk, Susan? If my risk is $200, then it's $200. When it reaches my $200 risk, I better be out. Right? Because how can I maintain a good win-loss ratio and grow my account if I'm letting my losses get too big? Okay. I can't, right? I can't let my losses get too big. I have to manage my losses. We all lose money. It's part of the game. Everybody loses money in the market. That's all there is to it. Anybody tells you that they don't lose money is a flat out liar. It's business. Every business loses money. How is that almost impossible? Let me show you a couple. Would you guys say NIO is a very volatile stock? Pretty darn volatile stock, right? If you look at the implied volatility, it's way up there. 140, 150%, 160% implied volatility. I made $12,000 on this trade. I bought this candle here, and it pulled back on the day. And I know because I got some emails. People followed that trade, 
And when it pulled back, closed the trade for a loss because they couldn't stick with their plan. Got the emails. Panicked. You know why I didn't panic? I didn't like it. I set my stop loss and I let the trade work. That's it. I'm done. Okay, follow the trade. Stock pulled back over here, popped a buy signal. Very close to support, beautifully off a trend. Guess what I did? There wasn't even any hesitation. I bought a thousand more shares. What I was doing with, an, with this trade, because it was a stock trade, Darren, when it popped up here, I actually sold out of the money calls on it to hedge that position. It hadn't reached my goal, so I sold out of the money calls on the gap to hedge the gap. Okay. I took my profit somewhere up in here on the trade. I made my money. I wasn't, I don't care what happens after that. I made 12 grand. I'm done. Okay. I don't worry about what happens after I close it. I'm out of the trade. It's over. Both of these trades were basically the same setup, waiting for the trade to move over to trend and holding off of the trend. I do that same trade over and over and over and over and over. Okay. Van, what you're trying to ask me here is what's my prediction on the next price move of this chart? Isn't that what you're really asking me? What's going to happen next? Do you think I know? I don't know. I have no idea what's going to happen next. Tomorrow morning, this could be down here. Does it do me any good to speculate that this is going to be a good buy tomorrow? Van, I always wait for a buy signal. I always wait for a buy signal. I don't anticipate an entry into a trade. I did that for a long time, and it delivered me some of the worst losses I've ever had because I try to predict the turn, predict when the stock was going to move. Okay, bad, bad mistake. So I always wait for the entry signal. And the other thing is, guys, people will ask me, where's this going to be a good trade? I don't know until I see it. I don't know until I see it. I know what my trade is. My trades are trending stocks. My trades are the stock moves up and pulls back for the pullback opportunity with a buy signal. That's one trade. The other, next trade is the stock moves up, consolidates over, puts in a buy signal. That's my other trade. I do that over and over and over again. That's about all I do. Well, how, what would a buy look like? It looked like that right there. That's what a buy looks like. Right? I bought it right here, so that's what a buy looks like. Does that look like a good buy at that point at the end of the day? Nope, but at some point during the day, that looked like a good buy.
We all know what a bullish candle looks like, guys. We all know when we see buyers stepping in, up into a trade. Okay, there's no guarantee it's going to stay that way through the end of the day. You have to know what your trade is. My two trades I just told you. Stock moves up, pulls back, holds support, holds trend. Pops a buy signal. If that is a good, strong buy signal and I like the condition of the market that day, that's a buy. Take a look at like CGC. This is a very high implied volatility trade. Did you guys see that I could got into this trade by just simply waiting for this trade to move over to trend? I didn't, but it's the same trade. It's the exact same thing over and over and over. What about the downtrend sell-off right here? There's the downtrend. There's support. There's the entry into the short. It's the same trade every time. I'm looking for the trade that gives me a low risk on the position. That I can calculate my risk to my stop loss, that it's acceptable. And the trade has enough upside opportunity to make me the kind of money I want to reach my goal. It really is that simple, guys. It, it's I do two things in the market. If that trade doesn't set up in that way, I don't trade it. It, it really is that simple. It, I just, I don't trade it. Okay, I don't care who trades it or anybody else trades it. I don't trade it until it does what I want it to do. Um, let's talk about downtrends here for a second. When a trade becomes a buy. If you take a look at any stock, um, let's take a look at Apple right now. I had these questions today on the stocks like this. Apple does not come a, become a buy at any time that it's pushing up here. See that nice buy signal right there? That is not a buy to me because I don't buy stocks that are pushing a downtrend, period. I buy stocks at or near price support and trend. I don't buy stocks at or near price resistance because you can't imagine how many times I would buy that trade and then see that next failure come right there. How many times do we have to fail along this line before we believe it's true? So I don't buy that. Anytime a downtrend is broken, it has to break and it has to prove to hold support. Then it can become a buy. There's no buy here. There's no buy here. There's no speculation in what I do. It either is a buy or it's not a buy. Here's a trade I took today. CWH. What did CWH do? I bought this today. It broke its downtrend. I didn't look take that trade right there. It hadn't broken its downtrend. And proven that it was going to hold it as support. Today it did. I made that trade. Okay, I repeat that same pattern over and over and over. That is the early entry trade into the resumption of a trend. Anytime a stock is in a downtrend, there is no trade. I had tons of questions on Microsoft today. Should I buy Microsoft? As if I'm supposed to say that, yes, this time will be different. When we approach this resistance, this time will be different than it was here and here and here. This time will be different. I know that. I've got a crystal ball, and I know that it won't fail there. I don't. What I know is that's where it fails. 
So the only way this becomes a good trade is if it breaks out of that downtrend and proves to hold it. Then it's a trade. There's no, no gray area there. Can you guys see that? I'm not wringing my hands worried about buying this. Oh my gosh, I'm missing out. I don't care. It's not my trade until it is the right setup. Does that make sense? It's one of the ways I've been able for the last 20 years to maintain a win-loss ratio that's very high. Okay, because I don't mess around with my rules. It's a rule for a reason. I follow the rule and I just trade my plan. I'm really not that smart, guys. I just repeat the same thing over. Can you guys see? Just look back here in these charts. Am I doing the same thing over and over and over again? That's all I do. I average about 70% win-loss ratio. Sometimes a little better, sometimes a little worse. It's been, it's been a long time since I've been below about 67%. Because when I start slipping that direction, there's either something wrong with me or there's something wrong with the market, and I stop trading. Okay. I have the discipline to know that something's not working. It's time to stop. Figure out what's going on. Might be me. Okay. Might be just the market stinks and I'm pressing. Okay. So I have to, I have to follow along with that and pay attention. But you can go back in my charts as far as you want. And you guys are going to see. It's the exact same thing that I do over and over and over and over again. I've made a career doing the same thing over and over and over again. Okay? So when you start down this path of trying to figure out how to manage trades, first off, can you guys see why my mind is at ease all the time? Why I'm not stressed when I'm looking at the market. I'm not stressed because I trade a set of rules. I plan my trades. I set my plan. I trade the plan. No stress in that. I don't negotiate with the market. I don't try to wring my hands and think I can outsmart the market. I don't try to be some super secret trader. I do the same things over and over. I repeat the same things over and over and over. I follow the same set of rules over and over and over. The one thing I have done, and it took me a long time, is develop the discipline to just follow your stupid rules. Because when you do, you win. Okay? Trade management begins before you enter the trade. One of the reasons, well, the reason, I put out the morning market prep every day is because that is what I have done for about 20 plus years. I am setting my mind, my decision point, is this market a good market to trade today? I make those decisions. I set all my orders before the market opens. My stop losses are adjusted. My profit targets are adjusted. If the stock is gapping, I may just place an order to close it. All of that's done before the market opens. No, today, to, to, me, to me, was just a stupid day. We were down, think about it, we were down 400 points yesterday and we gapped up 300 points. That's a 700 point swing. And then we went on up and went up over 400 points to the upside. What, what about that says we have any say so about what happens? Can you guys see that tomorrow we could gap down 400 points? It wouldn't, there wouldn't be anybody surprised at it. 
but we get caught up in the chase, right? Oh my gosh, it's up. I'm missing out. I got to hurry up and trade. Jake was just mentioning, I think it was Jake that was mentioning in here, overtraded today. I bought too many things. And when the market pulled back, it hurt. Now imagine if it pulls back even more tomorrow, it's going to hurt a lot. So when we see those kind of things happening, we have to discipline ourselves to say, no, I'm not going to chase this. Sure, Joe. CWH. I bought the stock trade today. I didn't buy the options. I looked at the options. What I posted to the alert is I was buying the stock trade. I didn't like the choices that I had in options, so I chose to buy the stock. Stop loss is underneath this tail. Can't give you the exact to the penny, but it's underneath that tail. Okay. No. If, no, I'm not, if you're asking if I'm worried about this resistance here, no, because how do we hold the trend? The only way we can hold the trend, see if you're always worried, first off, we have a trend here, right? What's our current trend? Our current trend is up. Okay, how do we maintain a trend? By staying in a trend. So once I'm in a trend, if I have that low risk entry, no, this over here, unless this is a really, really big resistance area, it doesn't bother me. Because I know if we're gonna hold this trend, we have to get through there. If we don't, then this trade fails and I'm out. So no, I don't worry about it. The tolerance to my risk was acceptable. And I'm not gonna worry about this because the current, this is past, this is current trend. Would you guys say the current trend, the market is extremely bullish right now? I mean, excessively bullish, really? The, the, the only way you can really handle that, Joe, is, is realize that the only way we can be in a trend is the trend has to hold. Okay, um, I battled that a long time myself. You know, we would see a stock move up and then pull back and I was trying to buy here. And what I was doing all of the time, man, I did this so much. I honestly, I had a complex that I felt like someone must be watching me because every time I entered a trade, it would pull back. I said, how can this happen so much of the time when I enter, it pulls back? What I finally realized is I wasn't buying it here. I would wait for so much confirmation that it was breaking out here that I wouldn't realize I was really getting close to the place where I was going to pull back or consolidate. And I was always buying at price resistance. Does that make sense, Joe? And I'm telling you, that was so hard for me to get through my head. So hard. I was always chasing it after the fact, after it moved. Think about it in today's market. If we get three, four days in one direction, what's the next most likely thing that's going to occur? The probability is growing, right? The probability is growing for a pullback or a consolidation, right? Particularly in this market, we get three, four days in one direction. That's a pretty good deal, right? But isn't it true? We look at a lot of these stocks. People will bring up stocks to me all day long that are up four or five days in a row. What do you think about this trade? I think it needs a rest or pullback. Because what they're doing is they're chasing that again. They're, they're letting this make them have so much confidence that it's going to break out that by the time they get in, it's ready for the stock to pull back. 
And that's exactly, that's right, Barry. That is exactly where I'm looking to take profits, where a lot of people are trying to get in, that are chasing it. I'm closing out my trade here. And that was really that flip of that switch that I realized, man, you got to stop buying stops at stocks at price resistance all the time. If a stock is up three, four, five days in a row, that is not the time to buy. That's the time to sell. I've already missed this trade. Wait for the next entry. Ah, uh, Van, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I had a complex over that. And you're not the first person that's ever said that. Man, it looks like you're, you're, you're watching me trade. No, because I've been there. I've, I mean, I've repeated that process over and over and over again. I chase the trade. Ben's pointing out PLTR. Let's PLTR. Yeah, trying to get into this thing. That's just a disaster waiting to happen. Uh, Jake, I don't know how many different ways I can tell you this. Stock is trending. It moves up. It pulls back. I wait for a buy signal. If that buy signal doesn't occur, I don't make a trade. Simple. I don't know what it's going to look like when it happens. It may move up and then dance around here a few days and then put in the buy. I don't know. I got to see the price action. The second price trade is when it moves up and consolidates over. I'm looking for the buy signal. I'm following the trend. That doesn't mean if the buy signal pops here, I'm taking it because I'm not. It's not following the rules of the trade. Okay, I'm buying those stocks with low risk entries. I want to see that stock holding trend and holding a price support. If I can get a stock price support right in here where they can coincide, this is one of the best trades I can find. Because I have price giving me support and trend giving me support. And then if that buy signal shows up here, that's the trade I want. It's no different than NIO. This buy signal. It's the same thing. And if you go back in my charts, you'll see the same thing over and over. Just look at my alerts. It's the same thing over and over and over again. I repeat the same thing over and over and over again. But I'm disciplined not to buy it here. I wait for the trade. Okay, so it's really not that hard if you study price action in the chart. But what we tend to do, guys, and this is true, I know this is true for most people here listening and most people that trade. They're only looking here. They're not evaluating the chart, the price action, the resistance in the chart or anything. They're not looking at any of that. What are they doing? They're trading this candle and that candle only. Oh my gosh, there's a buy signal. I got to jump on it. No. There's so many fake buy signals out there. They're just all over the place in every chart. Okay. Every place all over the market where people are chasing trades and I th and um, I don't know what to call it we probably should give it a name of some kind um, it's it's a pattern I don't know if we'll find any it's a pattern that repeats itself over and over and over in the market I see it all the time. And that is we get these 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 big moves, okay, like that. 
then we pull back and this signal pops in here and everyone wants to chase that trade. We have no consideration of the downtrend that's in play here. We have no consideration that we're way off of any price support in here, that this is a high risk entry. We just want to hurry up and get into that trade because we missed it before. It has to be good now. And what happens? Pops and we get killed. And it happens over and over and over again. You'll see it over and over again. Here's another one right here. Pops up, a couple days pullback. There's that signal, right? There's that buy. Oh my gosh, look at this. I can finally catch this trade. Jump on that trade, bang. What's the mistake here? It's the same mistake people repeat over and over. What did they do? They bought at price resistance. They didn't buy at price support. Over and over, same mistake. They didn't buy this one because they were worried about this resistance. I can't take this trade. There's resistance here. But they buy it right at price resistance and wonder why they get stopped out. It took me forever to figure that out. Lots of pain to figure that out. I buy at price support, not at price resistance. I sell stocks at price resistance. Okay, and it just, it just happens so much anymore. It's like the institutions have figured that out. If they can drive a stock up or down in a big direction and then put in a signal for an entry, people will jump on it and they just, they just suck the air right out of the trade. It's the same thing here, Netflix. I had people ask me today, Netflix, is this a buy? Well, again, how many times do we have to fail along this line before we believe this is true. Isn't this buying at price resistance? I mean directly at price resistance. So why should be we be surprised if we buy this and the next day it does this? Pulls back. Right? But we get so excited about that big white candle. Is this a buy today? Well, here's a couple ways to figure that out really quick. If you actually follow a set of rules, how many of you are going to buy this trade and put your stop loss under here, the last test of support? Is there anybody in here that's going to take that trade? No. But the first thing we do is we see that candle. Oh my gosh, is that a buy today? Well, you know, if you're trading somebody else's money, if you've got if you if you've got the password to Ed's account, go ahead and trade it if you want. <laughs> but it's not going to be in a, out of my account. That's not my trade. And and you'll just see that everywhere in charts, over and over and over again. If you're looking for it, we get those big moves away, get those big pops. We get that little bit of love, and then it immediately pulls back. Yeah, yeah Ed did hunt you down, and he knows how to shoot. <laughs> Take care, Ed. Have a good one. I need to cut this off, too. Been here for an hour and a half. But if you learned anything, if you picked up anything here tonight, I want you to pick up the idea that good management of a trade begins before you enter the position. You have to know who you are as a trader. You have to know what your risk tolerance is and what you're trying to achieve. Let me give you just a quick analogy to explain that for a second. It's just like any other business. When I was building houses, okay, I built some 10, 12, 14,000 square foot houses in my career. When they hand you a set of plans for a house like that, it's absolutely overwhelming. You, do, you don't even, if you tried to think about everything that had to, be, had to be done to complete that house, to hand those keys to the owner, 
It's, it's absolutely overwhelming. The only way you can do that is break it down. What's step one? Step one, call for a site inspection. Figure out what you need to do to prepare to dig the hole. What's step two? Get the hole dug. Step three, get the form set. Step four, pour the concrete. Step five, call for an inspection so you can get a backfill taken care of and you can start. It's just one step at a time. If I thought about what it takes to get over here to the end, I can't do it. Same thing with trading. When you look at trades, what's step one over here, guys? Having a plan. What's step two? Knowing your risk tolerance. What's step three? Knowing what you're trying to achieve in a trade. What are your goals? What's step four? Following your trade plan, identifying that trade. Step five, planning that trade to your stop loss. Evaluating the market condition. Set those steps in place and then it's no problem. There's no stress in the trade. You're just following your trade plan. You don't have to have all this anxiety about how you're going to get over here where you want to be until you know what the first step is. What's the first step? Take that step and the next one and the next one and the next one. Pretty soon you have a trade that's planned, it's done, the stop is in place, you know what's going on, there's nothing to stress about. Does that make sense, guys? What's the first step? And just follow your process. Right? Just follow your process. Yeah, put it on a recipe card. Follow the recipe. What do we do first? Okay, follow the recipe. Because it's the same thing that we do over and over and over again. Right? If you want consistency in cooking, you can't just wing it, right? You can't wing it. You got to follow a recipe. You got to follow a plan. Same thing is true here. If you want to be a good trader, if you want to be a professional trader, if you want consistency in your trading, you've got to follow a plan. You've got to follow your recipe. What's step one? Take step one. Now to take step two. Once you get through the process of entering that trade, there's nothing more to worry about. What's, the, what's our job then after we put that trade in order, the trade is in place? What do we do now? Sit and watch that thing wiggle around all day? Or do we look for another trade? You must have been late, Modi. Yes. There's no way you can have a plan tolerance to risk without a hard stop loss. And for me, that's just not wishy-washy. This is how much I'm willing to risk on a trade and not a penny more. I have to have a hard stop loss. Right? Take the first step, work through your process, and now there's no stress in your trading. You don't have to get all worked up. There doesn't have to be a whole bunch of anxiety. Just follow your plan. Okay? I hope that helps. I'm telling you, there's no way I could have been a successful builder. If I tried to think about every part and piece that had to go into that, into the construction of that house to the end, the only thing you can do is start with step one and keep moving forward. Okay? I think it's the same plan that you have to have in your trading when you're thinking about reaching a goal. How are you going to maintain consistency if you don't know where you're going? Right? 
How are you going to know if you don't know where you're going? You can use a percentage bill if you want to. I don't. I use a dollar amount, and the reason is if you trade a $300 stock and a $30 stock, is the percentage difference up here going to be a way bigger total than a percentage stop loss on this? If you take a 3 or 4% stop loss at $300 or a 3 or 4% stop loss at $30, that's a big difference in price, right? So the percentage thing never worked for me. Make sense? So for me and my trading goals, it's really, really simple. If I know I want to get here, I know it's not going to be a straight line from there to there, right? I'm going to have to set intermittent places, steps, to make sure I can get there. Sometimes I get knocked back. But I have to keep working forward or I'm never going to reach that goal. I will never reach that goal unless I have a process to get there. Just incremental steps. Okay. All right, guys. I hope that helped. Managing your trade begins before you start the position. Build your plan, build your recipe, follow that plan, and repeat the same thing over and over and over. All right. Everyone take care of yourselves. Have a great night. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it so much. Um, and we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning with the Morning Market Prep. Oh, you guys are welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Talk to you all soon. Take care now.